seriously, some people think that you need a million gadgets like lanolin and herbs and mother's milk tea and supportive pillows and nursing pads and a pump and there are so many things that you can purchase that will aid in breastfeeding but the honest truth is you need one breast one baby and you're ready to go Hey mommies, welcome to the Yellow Nursery. Today we are talking about what you need to have before baby comes so that you've got everything ready to be able to breastfeed, okay? So the first thing that I wanna discuss with you is your birthing plan. Now, whether or not you're having baby in a hospital, baby in a birthing center, or baby at home, you should have some sort of birthing plan. The birthing plan should indicate how you want your overall birthing experience to be. And the best thing to do is to decide now, how are you going to feed the baby? Are you going to breastfeed or bottle feed? And that should be indicated in your birthing plan. So your OBGYN or your doula or your midwife should have a clear indication of how you're planning on feeding your baby. And if you're planning on breastfeeding, then that person that is going to be with you when you deliver your baby should be able to know ahead of time that if you're breastfeeding your baby, no artificial nipples. So often in baby nurseries, in hospitals, the people working in the nurseries love to give babies artificial nipples because it keeps all of the babies quiet and happy. And it makes the people working in the nurseries look really good because they have a quiet, happy nursery. But I'll tell you right now, it's really easy for a baby to get nipple confusion if they're sucking on a pacifier or a bottle because it's not the same as a human mommy. So. If you're going to breastfeed, then make sure that you clearly state in your birthing plan, no artificial nipples. That is the first most important thing. The second most important thing is to identify a lactation specialist or perhaps a supportive breastfeeding group like La Leche League in your area and get the number ahead of time and have it ready so that if you run into problems or you need some extra support, you already have that connection made. Now, if you want, you can skip right down to the video that is how to get a good latch and watch that and you'll be all ready. Or you can keep watching this video and I will tell you about all of those supportive products and some of them will help make your breastfeeding experience better. They will enhance your breastfeeding experience and truthfully, some of them are good to have, honestly, but you don't have to have them. The truth is, if you get a good latch and you've got a breast and a baby, honestly, you can have a good breastfeeding experience. So let's talk about then those supportive things and how you can use them and then you can decide if you want to buy them or not. Now let's start down the road and take the journey of all of the gadgets and the paraphernalia that you can spend money on and purchase to help you breastfeed, okay? Lanolin. My favorite kind is Lansino and I'll show you a picture. It's a little purple tube. But you can also buy different kinds of lanolin to rub on your nipples. And honestly, you don't have to have it, but often it makes mommies feel better. Sometimes your nipples get dry. And the good thing about the lanolin is that it comes in a food grade lanolin. So you don't have to wash it off. You can rub it on your nipples and then baby can nurse right on top of it. So. It makes mommies feel good. If your nipples are kind of dry or chafy or cracky, then 
you feel like you're pampering yourself a bit and baby can nurse right on top of it so you don't have to worry about baby getting anything that would perhaps harm them or be dangerous. The other thing that's a little bit not so great about lanolin for the nipples is it's super icky sticky. It's really thick and when it comes out of the tube you often have to hold it between your fingers and let your body heat really soften it and melt it before you ever try to put it on your nipple. And even trying to do that, putting it on your nipple often is a little bit of a struggle. Supportive pillows. I have a long torso. I have a lot of room from my breast to my lap. But if you're a petite little mommy that's five foot nothing, you're not gonna have a big space from here to here. So think about whether or not you feel like you really need a supportive pillow. And remember, everybody has bed pillows in their house. So you can easily put a bed pillow on your lap, a toss pillow on your lap. I've seen mommies take a pillow and roll it up and put duct tape around the ends and make their own supportive pillow. However, if you want to buy a cute, fancy schmancy pillow that's made just for breastfeeding, there are many out there that you can purchase. My personal favorite is the Boppy. It may be just because the Boppy has been around for a long time, but I find that if you're an average size woman to a smaller size woman, the boppy works great. Even if you're a little bit more voluptuous or chubby, the boppy still works great because it has enough give. And I like the boppy because not only can you put it around the front of you so that you can nurse in cradle hold or cross cradle hold, but it also works great to put it on the side of you so that you can nurse in football hold. The other thing I love about a supportive pillow is if you have had a c-section it just gives that little extra barrier between you baby and an incision so a supportive pillow is good in a lot of ways sometimes they tend to be a bit pricey may not fit in your budget but a good thing to consider nursing pads nursing pads are those neat little round pads that you slip into your brassiere so that if you leak milk, which 80% of women do, then you don't get nice wet spots on your shirt for all the world to see. Nursing pads come in a gazillion different kinds. You can get flannel ones that you wash and reuse. You can get disposable ones. You can get kinds with sticky on them so they don't move in your brassiere. There are so many different kinds. It would take me 12 videos to show you all of them. However, I can tell you, eco-friendly or not, I preferred the kind that you could throw away simply because I had enough milk to feed mainland China and so I had to change them quite often. However, I have had some patients that used the flannel ones that you could wash and then reuse. Um, if you do that, I would suggest getting yourself a small little mesh laundry bag and putting them in that so you don't lose them because they tend to get lost in the washer in between the barrel and the edge of the washer if you still have an agitating washer. And you want one of those little mesh bags anyway for the little itty bitty pieces of baby socks and mittens and whatnot. So, another thing that I have seen are lily pads. They are a small kind of scalloped um, silicone sort of nursing pad that suctions gently onto the breast and captures all of the leaking milk and you just gently rinse it off and then place it back on the breast when you're done and they are also reusable. Really, really handy if you're going to be, say, swimming or wearing more of a formal gown. So, yet another gadget. More of an essential gadget than perhaps the lanolin or the nursing pillow because if you're going to function in daily life, you probably need a nursing pad. 
a nursing bra. Probably more essential than the other things we've talked about. I have many patients that don't wear a nursing bra. A lot of them just pull up their normal bra, let the rest fly out under the bottom and go that way. I have found personally that that is extremely difficult to function in everyday life. It is much easier to buy a proper fitting nursing bra. If you have a lactation store or some sort of lactation station area slash gift shop in your hospital, most of them will do a proper nursing bra fitting for you. There are also lots of websites on the internet that will actually do nursing bra fittings on the website for you, like a virtual fitting. You actually take all of your measurements and submit them on the internet, and then they tell you exactly what nursing bras they think would be the best for you. I will include links below for all of these things and information so that you have the best chance at finding a great nursing bra. One of the things that's super important to remember when you're looking for a nursing bra is to make sure that there's not anything pinchy on the sides or in the middle so that you don't get a restrictive area so that you don't get a plug duct, which would lead to mastitis or a breast infection. Make sure also that when you buy a nursing bra that you don't buy one that is too tight fitting and you don't wanna buy like five of them before you have your baby because you don't know what size your bust is going to end up being once all of your milk regulates. So I would suggest a very soft, perhaps um, loose fitting sleep bra just in the beginning until your baby's about six weeks old and then get a proper fitting for a nursing bra once everything's kind of settled down and everything's regulated. Here's another one, ready? A pump. It's a really good idea to have a pump. Now, should you run to Walmart and buy a pump? Uh-uh. My suggestion would be, if you're going to buy a pump, buy one that is a hospital grade, good brand of pump, Medela or Amida. Those are two really good brands of pumps. If you can't afford to buy one that's electric, then buy a hand pump because both of those companies make super good hand pumps. If you can afford to buy one that's electric or your insurance company will pay for one, then go ahead and get yourself like a Amita Purely Yours electric pump or the Medela double electric pump. Either of those would be great to have on hand, especially if you experience engorgement when your milk first comes in, or if you're a mommy returning back to work, or even if you're a mommy that has to leave her baby to, with a babysitter or for a certain amount of time. A pump would just be a great thing to have. Again, not a necessity, but a great thing to have. And if you don't end up getting a pump and you need to know how to express some milk, there will be a video posted here soon enough on how to do hand expression. So don't panic. You should keep buying your prenatal vitamins and you should keep taking them the whole time you breastfeed. It's super important that you keep up your nutrition. And a lot of mommies kind of lose their appetite after they've had baby, but it's really, really important that you keep eating a healthy diet and also keep taking that prenatal vitamin. Another thing that I think is really a good idea is to supplement with vitamin C. And my favorite kind of vitamin C to supplement with is vitamin C with rose hips. So if you're gonna supplement with vitamin C and you're gonna go out and buy some and you don't already have some, buy the kind that says with rose hips on it and throw that supplement in with your prenatal vitamin. It can only help prevent mastitis and make you feel better as you journey down the breastfeeding path. You can get those fancy nursing covers if you want, but you can achieve the same thing by just gently throwing a blanket over your shoulder, totally up to you or you can watch my video on how to discreetly nurse in public. It's coming up soon in the next few weeks. However, you also could just get a few nursing tops that would help you gently like maneuver and undo your shirt in a way that you could nurse more discreetly as well. Totally up to you, something to think about. Okay, 
a nursing stool. I didn't need one because I'm five foot 11, but if you're like five foot seven, five foot six and shorter, a nursing stool is a great idea because it elevates your knees enough that it gives you kind of a little bit of a platform or a table to lean on. So a nursing stool is a great idea. Now, Medela makes one that is wooden and it's got a little slant to it, which is a fabulous one. However, it's a little pricey. So you can achieve the same thing by going to Walmart and getting a little $3 plastic stool if you want to. Totally up to you. Another thing to consider is whether or not oh here's here's one that blows my mind women are constantly running out and buying nipple shields and breast shells you don't need either of these things a nipple shield is going to do nothing but sabotage your breastfeeding experience and a nipple shell is going to do nothing but cause you great pain and be super uncomfortable to wear in your bra I have a few patients that wear the breast shell to apparently collect breast milk. Um, a breast shell was not designed to necessarily collect breast milk. A breast shell was designed to help draw out an inverted nipple. And if you will watch my video coming up in the next few weeks on how to draw out an inverted nipple, there are much better ways to do it than wearing a breast shell and much more comfortable as well. Nipple shields sabotage mommies and babies. So don't use a nipple shield unless you absolutely have to. I see a lot of patients that come into my clinic and they have a nipple shield and they're nursing with it and they say, well, I was told at the hospital that I had a flat nipple and they don't have a flat nipple. Or I was told at the hospital that my nipple's a little inverted and they don't have an inverted nipple. So really be careful. Um, watch the video on how to get a good latch and don't use a nipple shield unless you absolutely have to. Okay, so I think we've covered a bunch of the different gadgets or supplies or supportive things that you may need to buy before your baby comes or to support you in your breastfeeding endeavors. But remember, you don't have to buy any of it. You just really need one breast and one baby and you can breastfeed. So thanks for joining me today in the Yellow Nursery. Remember to come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing you.